Welcome back to Jason Unleashed, you guys. Hey, hi, hello, Jason Carter here, your host. Thank you for watching. We are back. Women in Media Week begins today with Gia Peppers. She is a fantastic talent. You may, you may have seen her on all kinds of cool things, ranging from Black Girl Beauty on VH1 to Black Coffee on BET and the Black Girl Podcast. She's sending her request now, so let's bring her in. Doom, 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 doom. Waiting to connect. It's always like a little lag technology. Hi! Gia Peppers! How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. You look great. Per you usual. as well. You as well. Thank yeah. You. Uh, I'm so glad to have you on the show. You are kicking off Women in Media Week here on Jason Unleash. I thought, what better way to do that than with a girl who has been killing the game and hustling. Thank you. I appreciate that. I remember when we met, like, what was that, like five years ago? Five years ago, New York. At, like a ABC. hosting class? Yeah. Yes. Gia, it's interesting you bring that up because that was the first time I had been to the East Coast with oh East Coast talents, right? And you girls were not playing. <laughs> yes, honey, we don't play on the East Coast. Um, <laughs> but no, they don't play anywhere. We don't, you know, this this, this game is, is so, it's so real, you know? So people really, when it's time for those opportunities, they are ready to go. Ready. I mean, the, just the energy in the room. I'm thinking it's like Hunger Games, but it was great though. It was it was it was a good competitive energy because you guys were all from from pop culture to to culture, from news to, to hard news. There were so many different talents there. But let's talk about you because okay, we've been watching Gia Peppers on TV and online for a while now. Let's take it back to to the beginning. Rutgers graduate. Okay. Yes. Coast, you um, strong yeah. foundation in God, really close to your family. Amen. You start out just just hustling. Tell us about your journey in hosting and how you became the Gia Peppers we know and love. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'm from Washington D.C. Originally, grew up in the D.M.V. Um, and that shaped so much of who I am and 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 what I love to do. Um, my dad is a journalist. So grew up watching him and really just loving everything about his career, except for the f fact that it was hard news. I knew I could not do no hard news. My dad is the best. Hey, Zell, my dad is the best at, you know, just covering all of the craziness from wars to everything in between. But when September 11th happened, I was like, oh, this is very real because my dad couldn't come home for two weeks. He had to like stay and continue the coverage. And at 11 years old, you're like, I don't care about coverage. I care about, hey, Kiana, I care about can my dad get home tonight? And so yeah. I knew then, and, and I grew up dancing, singing, and acting on stages and things like that. So I knew then that I wanted to be a, um, an entertainment. I didn't know which way, but I knew I was going to be in entertainment. And so I went to high school. I started doing the morning news at my high school. I was writing about different things when I wasn't acting and doing stuff myself. And then I uh, went to college at Rutgers University because I knew I wanted to be close enough to New York City that if I had to do an internship, I could go there and then also close enough to home as to where if I needed to go home, I could be home in two and a half, three hours. So um, it just worked out well. And I started interning for the Wendy Williams show live with Kelly and Michael at the time. Um, I did this academy called the Ween Academy, which is the Women in Entertainment Empowerment Network. I just, I hustled. I was very serious about my, my drive. I really wanted to do everything that I could in college to just make sure I was that, that prepared for when I did graduate. Um, and then when I did graduate, I went to the Na National Association of Black Journalists Conference. If you are a journalist and you want to be an NABJ, please, please, please go sign up. Um, when I was there, I got my first career in, first job in my career as a, an uh, overnight desk associate at CBS Radio News. And so that was my first gig in the, in the, in this whole realm. And I was working overnights in the newsroom from like 11 PM to 8 AM, like getting that grind and really just making sure I could do everything. And on those hours where there was no news, I was just making sure that I was mapping out what I wanted for myself. Cause I knew my journey wasn't going to be like anybody else's and through a lot of just networking and staying focused and putting my reels out there and hosting with the Washington wizards and hosting um, di different things with shows with BT and then with VH1 and with black girl podcasts, I've just been able to continuously kind of like show up for myself and, and for black women really. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much my hustle story. Like, I, I gave you the spark notes, 
but <laughs> my hustle story. I love it though because I mean it's it's your hustle story is so is so I would say I don't say transparent because we it's very transparent what you're saying because we see it in your social media. I mean I've been following you for years. I yeah. see you go from from essence. Yeah. But you have you have been able to have your hand in so many powerful historic and just very very essential pieces of black culture and pop culture and entertainment from essence to BET, Thank you. VH1, as you said, I mean complex, the NBA, I mean Gia, that hustle is yeah. is, is undeniable and I, I identify with you so much because I like you, I started working in radio overnights. Yeah. And you, you know you you know what you want to do. You it, it, it's you wake up one day and you're like this is what I want. And then you start thinking about, okay, what's that path going to look like? Right. How am I going to get there? And, like, and I'm glad you said that not everyone's path is the same. You know, you no. there's different ways you can go to get there. But let's talk about you auditioning for 106 in Park. Years ago. Child. Gia. Remember when they did that? First of all, hey, Kendra. Thanks, sis. Um, yeah, so I had just graduated from college, and you remember this. You remember when they were looking for the talent, and yeah. um, they put out this nationwide search to be the next host of 106 and Park, and it could be you. And everybody and their mama did an audition tape, child. We was like, in the house, like, I am going to be the next three. Um, watch out AJ, watch out everybody, because I believe in this, this, and that, and I know I got the energy, and... um. They ended up choosing Bow Wow and Angela Simmons, and then they chose, you know, Rodney Rakai, who ended up being one of my co-hosts, one of my really close friends, brothers, mentors, all that. Um, they ended up choosing Shorty the Prince, who's now on radio um, in Atlanta, um, doing an am amazing morning show with like L'Oreal and all those, and Headcrack and all those people. Um, and they chose Miss Mikey and Pajon. And, um, but it was such a dope experience for BET to like, rev up their audience because we had all grown up at this point watching 106 and Park and loving right. AJ and Free and loving Terrence and Roxy and um, I just was like I want to send it out I wanted to be I wanted to be on TV at that time but what I didn't understand was that everything is not overnight it's going to yeah. take eight to ten years to get to where you want to go and I'm still very much grinding and trying to get to where I want to go because you know, I've worked with Terrence now. I've hosted with Ro I've hosted with Terrence now. I've worked with um, Roxy on, on like just like we've been around in the same circles. Like now, it's not so far away, and so now I'm just getting very still about why God has me here because I don't want it to look. I don't want anybody else's dream. I don't want anybody else's vision. I don't want anybody else's gifts. I don't want anybody else's opportunities. I only want my opportunities and I just have to right now it's about being focused and making sure that I'm able to turn those opportunities into the right move for my career. So right. you know we're yeah. in the middle of the journey but it's been a long time since I did that. That's still up on my YouTube. I, I know. I, I watched it five times. I know. <laughs> but but you know you didn't you did um you've done a myriad of different interviews and you talked about rejection and how yeah. you know and, and how that has shaped who you are as a talent and, about, and also about what your mother has instilled in you. Let's, let's go back to rejection in your yeah. career. And I'm like, you know, we're, we're, we're talking the same, the same language, yeah. but for our viewers that are watching right now, tell us about a time when the rejection was just so real. Because I think, as you said, an overnight success is 10 years in the making. And even when you land at great places like BET, VH1, Essence, you know, yeah. being, being the host at Essence Festival. Um, yeah. Um, there's still, there's a lot of hiccups along the way. There's a lot oh, of yeah. no. Tell us about a time where you wanted something really bad and it didn't happen and that and how that affected you and how you rebounded for that. Because I think those stories are just as impactful as yeah. the success stories. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think the mecca of entertainment news is E! News, right? Like, there is no place, like, thank you guys, hey guys, there's no place like E! Um, on this planet where you walk into the building and it's like, we're all about entertainment. We're all about everything entertaining and being, you know, like it's like news, but they're also really good on, at making sure that people um, that they invest in as talent get oh. to the next level. They're very good at Boom. making yes. sure that they actually support the talent that works with them. 100%. Um, and they're serious about it now. They're like, you can't work nowhere else. And you can't do nothing else. 
but here we'll take care of you. And so for me, E! News has always been one of those places where I was like, this is my dream. Like if I ever get to be on a carpet with them, work with them, like that's my dream. Um, and I have been auditioning with E! I've been auditioning with E! like for like years. Like I'm sure all of us have been on, you know, auditions, all that stuff with E! Um, hey, Greg. And so when I... The last time I went out there, I, like, flew myself out there. It was, like, the top of last year. There were all these incredible women that I auditioned with. And um, it went well. Like, there was nothing wrong with the audition. There was nothing. Like, it was great. I did my best. I felt like I did my best. I, best. I felt like I did great. I ended up doing, like, some voiceover work with them. But it never quite looked like how I wanted it to look. Right. Like, right. And so. It never does. Um, right. And so I was like, oh. I felt so defeated because after several months, you know, you, you don't hear anything. You're like, oh, this is my dream. I've been saying this forever. I've been saying I want to work here forever. And I've been praying. I've been faithful. I've been doing all these things. And it still just didn't happen, right? And so for me, I had to let go. Oprah often talks about how when you manifest things in your life, you do all the work you can do. You pray all the prayers you can pray, and then you let it go. Hey, oh my God! Yeah, real quick. Um, right, her color purple story. I always yes. talk about that. Right? Yes, so yes. Like you just let it go, and um, I had gotten some feedback from someone that I really love and respect in the industry, and she told me that I needed to change the way I spoke, and she told me that I needed to change my voice, and I said. If I have to change who I am to be on anything, I don't want to be on it. So if this isn't the time, if this isn't the moment, if this isn't the day, then I'm not, that's not ever going to be for me. And I think that's exactly what I needed to hear from God so I could let that dream go. Because God made me exactly how I'm supposed to be. There is nothing wrong with me. There is no uh, emotion that I have that I don't deserve to feel. There is no moment that I walk into that I don't deserve to be there. And I will never, ever change the way I speak or sound to be on something else. When it's right for me, they'll love the way I look. They'll love the way I sound. And they'll love who I am. And I don't want to be a part of a place where I have to prove that I belong here. I know when I go somewhere that's right for me, like when I went in for the audition for the Washington Wizards, I could feel God saying, this is yours. Like, there are moments and, and days where you pay attention to what's around you and you feel like it's yours. So if somebody ever tells you to change who you are at the core of who you are, literally, I can't, I cannot change the sound of my voice. I will never talk like this to be on television. Can you imagine? That would be so <laughs> annoying. And so I let that dream go and not in a way that's like defeatist. It, it was like, okay, well, I'd rather be myself than yeah. anything else uh, and it's not even a dream I let go right if I if he calls me today I'm on a plane like don't ever get it twisted but it's one of those things where it's like you can't change yourself you can't you can do all of that you can you leave it and you put it out and you keep working yeah. you keep creating I just created a series called give you the game that I is probably my favorite thing I've done and and not like and not because it's like the most perfect, but it's the most me and I produced it and I wrote it and I booked for it and I hired the team for it and I spent my own money and I reinvested the money that I make as a host into my own production and it feels so good. And so for me, now I'm like, okay, what else can I create? What else can I do from this moment that I wouldn't have been able to do before? And I think it, there's so much about mindset, but knows i was doing an interview with um christina elmore who plays condola on um insecure. insecure and she also plays marie on 20s and she was like i'd learned to look at no's as that, that that they're not really no's if something was meant for me it would be mine it was just somebody else's yes it's not right. a no for me it was a yes for somebody else yeah. and i was like girl i ought to throw my shoe at you that is so good <laughs> So, you know, we got to stop acting like we are in a place of lack. We are not. We don't live from places of lack. There are hundreds of thousands of opportunities out here. Streaming services exist, hunty, because there are so many people that need to create and need to be put on. So, like, at the end of the day, if you feel like there's only one opportunity for you, you're not looking at life right. If you're right. upset, I've seen some tweets today 
if you're upset at people who are winning and you're upset at people who are booking things, you have to change your mindset. Because when that comes, when your moment finally comes and you see that tweet about somebody questioning why you're the person and why you're the winner, it'll feel so bad. Yeah. Today <laughs> is all about celebrating each other. We need to celebrate each other's wins. We need to celebrate at the end of the day. If there's a girl that's doing really well right now, I've heard it and I'll speak transparently. I've heard that about me where people are like, she's one of those girls that always gets all the opportunities. No, I'm not. None of us are those girls that get all the opportunities. I promise you, if there's a girl that you think gets all the opportunities, I promise you there were 10 no's in front of that one yes. Always. And you're taking her, you're taking away from that one yes moment and you're, you're taking away from her moment to celebrate by saying, dang, I'm so sick of all those girls getting the same opportunities. You have no, all of us have been working for 10 plus years. So yeah. please don't ever, ever, ever think that this is gonna be one of those moments where you are left out. That is not, that's not true. There's nothing to be left out of. Somebody else's, someone else's yes is is not your no. It's just not, it's you're not right now. And that's, I, okay. and that's I mean, those are, that's the truth. And people are, people are losing it in the comments because you're speaking, and this is resonating with a lot of people, Gio. That's no oh, idea. Yeah. Oh, I love this one. Um, but you, you, you're, that no was somebody else's yes. And you said the top of 2019, you were, you had this, you were excited for this opportunity with E, but fast forward to 2019, Black Coffee, BET. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black yeah, Girl yeah. Beauty. So, I mean, you said that, that you wanted to go to a place that celebrated you and yes. who you are at your core, and you found that in BET. Let's get into that, because, yeah. Gia, I watched all of it when it was live on the air. I oh. love Black Coffee, Lamont. Thank Hill. you. <laughs> It was so authentic, and you were the perfect person to fill those shoes. And, and also on Black Girl Beauty, because here we have the conversation, right? Yeah. Of being a beautiful Blackness, Black excellence, Black girl magic, and being able to be natural, being able to be, to have a space for these women. And not only women that, uh, that are cisgender, but you brought on drag queens from Drag Race. Yes, uh, honey, I, Peppermint and Honey Davenport were my... I was like, can I look like, please, can y'all, Peppermint came in there giving me Janet Jackson from 1993. I said, excuse me, Peppermint, can you teach me your ways? Y'all see the red I have on today? It has never left my soul, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yes. And so getting, doing, being a part of those projects, how did that change you? Because you were, you, you, you have been able to position yourself and not position in a way that's self-serving, but through purpose, you've been able right. to become a person who's positioned himself to speak for Black women, to be, to be yeah. a visible representation on television of what natural looks like, of what, of what Black women can do. How is that for you? Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing. No Black woman speaks for all Black women, and I don't ever want somebody to feel like I'm the only representative for Black women, right? Um, I am a Black woman who comes from a certain place. I come from the DMV. I come from a place where I saw all types of Blackness all around me every single day. When I grew up, DC was the chocolate city. So when you walked around, you saw every type of Black person from a CEO to the janitor to maybe even a drug addict to um, the preacher to a doctor. My mom's a dentist. Like I, I grew up with all facets, all walks of life um, around me. And so I love being Black. I will never, I like am so grateful God put me in this world as a Black woman because I wouldn't want to be any other person. We are so dope and we're so ill and we're so smart and we're so talented and we're so resilient and strong and beautiful and focused. Like if you give a black woman something to do, ch done. child, not only is it done, it's done to an ability that you've never seen done before and it's truthful and authentic and it's thinking of everyone. One thing black women do that I think a lot of people don't give us credit for is like, we often think of a lot of people. Pe we don't have the privilege of ignoring people. We don't get that privilege. We understand what it's like to be a woman. We understand what it's like to be underpaid. We understand what it's like to be ignored and copied and appropriated. We understand that. So when we create things, it's often from a place of love. Um, and so for me, you know, I am honored that I get to speak for myself and if Black women feel like they are affirmed and heard in what I'm saying, then I'm honored that I can be that representative. If there are Black women that don't agree with me, I'm honored. Hey, Angelique, I'm honored that they can say, I don't agree with that. Tell me why, sis. Let's talk about why you don't agree with it and what was your moment and tell me how you reacted 
so we can talk because discussions are such a beautiful thing and growth for all of us. And so for me, um, when Black Coffee came about, I've been working with BT for years. I've been working with BT for years. Yes. I have um, me, it was like Jamila Mustafa, Rodney Rakai, um, Taj Rani, um, it, all of us started the first uh, the first outing of BET Breaks, which was like five years ago when BET was still on the corner of like 69th and like 11th in New York, like way back um, before they were like officially, officially in the Viacom building in Times Square. And so I have been working with BET for a long time and they, they really wanted to try this show. Mark Lamont Hill, who is the creative force behind Black Coffee is one of the most intelligent black men that I've ever worked with and one of my favorite co-hosts and Jameer Pond the same way he is incredible and so moving and so um and so willing to be that person that transparent person about what it is like to be a black man who leads with his feelings I think that's so awesome and so we had a really great moment there and Mark, Mark realized the importance of having a show that could speak to the political issues that we're, we're, we're experiencing as a people, could speak to the trending topics that make us laugh and how we create and do the best things from all of that, from all, from all of that. Um, and also have people on from creatives to politicians. We interviewed everybody from Bernie Sanders to Kadeen Ellis to um, Robin Givens to Trina. Like we were able to really interview everybody. And so what that show was a blessing because we got to show that not only is blackness not monolithic, it's not expected to be. You right. don't have to like this episode, but you're going to learn about Trine Bean's story and you're going to see why she's still the baddest in the game. That, and and that's you know? and I, I, monolithic because I think, right. I think people, it's, uh, people that are not black and even people who are black want to police blackness, right? And they feel like it has to be a certain way. It has to be this, like you can't be this and be black. You can't be gay and be black. You can't be, yep. and be black, you know? So you're right. Watching Black Coffee, I saw, it was very interesting how you would, how the show would enter different different people that were Coffee. not POC, but yet could educate and lend and, and had similar, not similar experiences, but had something to offer. You know? To our, yes. Sometimes yes. you watch programming that is for, for black people and, right. it, and it's like okay well this is great but well, how are we doing things differently how are we how are we opening up how are we bridging the gap and exa that's exactly what black coffee did it's fantastic yeah. I mean the perfect pairing there though you yeah. and it was so good yeah I'm I don't know if it's coming back so it sucks but at the end of the day we did that's the thing about television right you can give all your love to it it could be the best idea ever and if the network isn't able to bring it back for various reasons, they just can't bring it back. And if people don't support it in the way that you thought, they can't bring it back. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things where you always have to just show up in the moment and do your best. Yeah. And, you know, what, can, what you can re receive from that and get from that is so much greater than worrying about whether or not a show is coming back. You just have to do what you can do in the moment, show up in the moment, be the most prepared, be the best, do your best, get, a, get some good rest and show up and show out for the moments and the opportunities that do come. But that, that's you, all you, you can. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready.